let's talk about the Seattle Seahawks here for a little bit. Look, it's certainly been an offseason of change for Seattle. Definitely a changing of the guard moving off of Pete Carroll, of course. Mike McDonald being the new head man in charge in terms of the head football coach. A lot of new assistants as well. A lot of new players as well. And to that end, Mike McDonald and the Seahawks leadership recently made a very interesting move that could have a potentially big impact. Let's get into this article, then we'll talk about more about what it could mean on the other side. This is courtesy of Seahawks Wire. All right. McDonald has removed iconic murals from the team facility, images of some of the greatest moments in Seahawks history, specifically ones created in the past 14 years. Moments such as the Beast Quake, Richard Sherman's tip, Russell Wilson's being emotional after the win over the Packers in the NFC Championship game, Cam Chancellor forcing a fumble of Calvin Johnson Jr., and hoisting a Lombardi trophy. Why are these iconic moments gone? Why are the walls of the Virginia Mason Athletic Center left bare? Why are all the remnants of Pete Carroll era of the Pete Carroll era seemingly erased? Two words: new legacy. McDonald's is sending a clear message to his new team. He wants them to forge a new way forward, creating new moments and memories, something to define this new era. All right, Myers, I certainly think this is an interesting move by McDon uh, Mike McDonald and company. Curious what your thoughts are, but first, Seahawks fans in the comment section below. Look, the draft is it's getting closer and closer and closer. It's an exciting time. We're trying to be very optimistic on the show, but we're going to flip gears very briefly. And in the comment section, give us the most memorable Seahawks draft bust of all time. The Seahawks have been a pretty good drafting team, but of course there are a number of busts in there. So give us your number one Seahawks draft bust in the comment section below. But Mike, give me your thoughts on this news involving the Seattle Seahawks and Mike McDonald. Yeah, Nick, I think this is definitely an interesting move, to say the least. This is something that you see happen, and you wonder, does it really make a difference? You know, is it worth doing something like this? Yeah, there's a lot of great moments in Seahawks history, but I think it does, because I think if you take a look at some of the other teams mentioned later in the article, it talks about, you know, Green Bay doesn't do anything like this. The Steelers, the 49ers, they don't do anything like this. You don't hear about them, you know, re erasing the history off the walls you know those are some teams that have really great dynasties a lot of stuff but when you think of those teams and you think of those great moments those were the peaks of those teams those were the highest heights those teams have ever reached and I think Mike McDonald's making a point here is yeah that you know brief period two three years of Seahawks absolute dominance it was really good but that is not our peak. That is not our legacy here. There is so much more that we are capable of doing. So I'm going to erase the history books and, you know, encourage us to make our own moments. Because you think about, you know, the Iron Curtain of the Steelers, you know, in the 70s. One of the greater teams that we've seen, you know, Terry Bradshaw leading them so many Super Bowls. They really haven't gotten to those heights again. And some teams rest on their laurels. You know, Green Bay, you know, or later on. Uh, 49ers, the Steve Young, Joe Montana years. I think it's just teams, they rest on their laurels too much. And Mike Mc... How about the Cowboys, right? They're the exactly. perfect example of that. The Cowboys are a great example of that. These are just teams we've seen throughout history that look like they've done so much, but yet after they start to rest on their laurels, they never really did anything again. So credit to Mike McDonald. I don't know if it will work, but it is a step in the right direction saying... This isn't our peak. We have so much more left to come. Yeah, and, and I think another thing to think about here, and you kind of alluded to it, is that this run of the Legion of Boom dominance, while they were absolutely incredible and an incredible run and certainly have their place in NFL history, it wasn't. it's not among one of the great top five, six, eight, maybe even ten runs in NFL history, right? You look at the Patriots had two runs. The Cowboys had a run. You talk about the Steelers' steel curtain run. The 49ers, Joe Montana run, right? You can go to the Chiefs run that they're on right now, right? So you're not even looking at, how about the, the Packers in the 60s come to mind as well? So you, you can literally go, the Dolphins early 70s, perfect team, you know, going to three Super Bowls, three straight years. The Bills going to four straight Super Bowls. I mean, you can just go through a list of teams that had really great runs that probably exceeded the Seahawks Legion of Boom era. So you can at least almost understand a little bit of those teams, you know, kind of calling on those eras because that's sort of like, hey, look, look at what we can do if we're the Steelers or the 49ers or the Cowboys or whoever and say, this is what we can be. This is who we can emulate to win three championships in four years or whatever. 
the Seahawks run had one title, which is fantastic. I mean, that's that's certainly more than a lot of other teams can claim. But the reality is, it's not like they were the greatest dynasty in football history. It was a really great run that was very, very, you know, obviously impactful in the history of the game. It changed a lot of how defenses, a lot of modern defenses come from that, you know, Legion and Boom stuff, the single high safety look, things like that. But the reality is, it's not something where you want to bring in rookies and say, this is what the Seahawks can be if we set our minds to it. You want to bring in rookies and say, we're going to win two or three Super Bowls, right? It's a different mentality. We want to be one of those Chiefs dynasties or one of the Patriots dynasties or the Cowboys in the 90s, so 49ers in the 80s, Packers in the 60s, Steelers in the 70s, or, and so on, right? And I think that's why this is a really important move by Mike McDonald. And I don't think it's necessarily erasing history, but the reality is you don't want people to come in here and sit there and say, as great a moment as a beast quake is, it's like, gosh darn it, wouldn't be, wouldn't be great if we won a wild card playoff game. Yeah. Right. That, that's that's what it was. The Beastquake was a great play. Don't get me wrong. It's one. Of, it's an awesome run. One of the great runs in NFL history. Maybe the greatest run. It was. A, it was a, led to a win in the wild card round. Right. Is that really what you want to bring rookies in to focus on? Is that really what you want new players to come in to focus on? Or you want people to come in and focus on winning championships? And I think that's what Mike McDonald is trying to do. He comes from a championship NFL program with the Ravens. He comes from a championship college program with the Michigan Wolverines, right? He's trying to establish that mindset of it's not about winning nine games anymore like we've seen from Seattle the last couple of years. It's not about maybe winning a wild card game, right? It's not about maybe, maybe even just winning one Super Bowl. He wants to build a dynastic program in Seattle, and I think that's the message he's trying to get across.